Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the PC6 from MR Aero Design, the PC6 Pilatus Turbo Porter Aircraft. Very, very excited with our progress. Anyways, let's roll that intro so we can get started with the build. guys my goal for this episode is we are going to get a whole bunch of the sheeting done now that we are pretty much ready to continue sheeting all the the big areas so we've got to continue with the fuselage we've got to do the front engine area we've got to do the underside of the fuselage so lots still to do on that I'm really happy in the last video with the outcome of the angle on the top side of the fuselage. I think it worked out really well, looks really good. And we're gonna continue on with sheeting the horizontal stab, the wings, we've gotta do our extensions in the wings and stuff like that. So gonna be a lot of big steps accomplished in this video and it's gonna ultimately make it look like there's some huge progress happening with the plane, which there is. So thanks guys for tuning in. If you have any questions, link them down below uh, in the comments. You can also shoot me an email, the lighter side of RC at gmail.com. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, guys. Do that right now. Hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. And let's get into this build. All right, guys, the underside is sheeted. So obviously I'm just waiting for this area, which I did last, to cure. And there she is. So the next step once this is cured is to add the inch and a half wide or uh, get the bevels on there first before you add the inch and a half wide stuff. So this is a shot of what it looks like kind of beforehand or mid bevel. So I just take my plane, as I've talked about previously, and basically plane the balsa so it's flat with the actual um, former of the, the fuselage. And then I take my Milwaukee sander and I will sand the plywood section. This one's, I just did a little bit of work with my plane, but basically you want that to follow the same angle. So when you glue this all on, it's sitting flush against everything, but right now there's a gap on the bottom there. So, so yeah, once this is all cured, that's the next step is just go along these side sides of the fuselage and get that all prepped and ready. Uh, we do have to take off all the uh, landing gear wing stuff um, and get that off so we can have some area to work in and that is what we're working on next all right so Dan the brick man how are you uh, commented or asked a question in my last video about how I glue the sheeting down with CA uh, because he's in a wheelchair and he finds that he runs out of time. So the couple tricks with that is the thicker the CA, the slower it's gonna cure. So that's something that can help as well too. But quite honestly, when I'm gluing my sheeting on, uh, at the beginning part of this plane build, you saw me glue a lot of it with CA because I had good access to it. And like the, the wings over there, right? You've got complete access to the top side. But when I'm gluing these fuselage panels on, uh, most of it's actually with wood glue and that's why I'm I'm using the weight there to hold it down I've seen some guys use bags of um, Like shot to uh, lay it all over the place, which would be awesome. I don't have any so that's why I'm using all the uh, The containers of different aerosols and stuff, but I actually was using So on the front section here. I was using kind of a mixture of wood glue and CA so I put wood glue kind of in the center and all the structural areas and then I put CA along the sides, CA along here, and lay it down. And then I can kick off the CA with kicker. But the wood glue is probably a stronger adhesive. Um, so like I talked about in my last video with the glues, it was for me, it's more about time than, than anything else. So yeah, if you are wanting to use CA, use some thicker CA, like thick CA. And you know, in the case of these panels here, you could um, basically lay your CA all over the fuselage then get your piece obviously your piece is pre-cut out and then lay your piece down 
and you'll still have quite a bit of time to work with it before it starts to stick. So hopefully that helps you out, Dan, and uh, still working on this. All right, guys, the edges are all completed on both sides of the fuselage. And I am filling in these spaces in between the float mounts. Um, might be a little bit hard to sand this, but we don't have, if you remember on the top side, we don't have a lot of sanding in this area, so shouldn't be that bad. Um, anyways, it's gonna make for a better look. I think I was kind of debating that in my head. And we do have some gaps there we'll fill in and, and uh, stuff like that, but uh, it's gonna be a nicer look with the, uh, the middles filled. All right, guys, you know you're making progress when your floor looks like that. All right, so one thing that I've started doing on this top section is rather than just doing my 90 degree, 90 degree, I've gone in and just kind of done a couple passes at different angles to get rid of the material here. Just means less sanding and less dust. Uh, and you just, you, again, you're avoiding the center part, which is gonna be at full, full height. So. Um, so it's a bit of a pain to work around the float mounts, definitely not easy. So I'm kind of doing the center section and then around the float mounts is gonna have to be all sanding. So that's gonna be a bit of a pain. And then that uh, spot in between that we filled in is gonna be a pain as well, but ultimately it's gonna look good. It's gonna be a nice finished product. So, so one side's done, ready to do the other side. All right, guys, we got both sides of the fuselage shaped, rough shaped, and now it's time to start sanding the shapes. So my plan, as I've talked about, it's gonna be a little bit hard to get in between these areas where the float mounts are. So I'm just gonna shape around the float mounts, and then we're gonna go back afterwards with a small sanding block and just get the float mount area shape to the rest of the area. So I'll leave this out as much as possible. And we're going to continue on with both sides of the underside of the fuselage. All right, edges on the underside are all formed. Very happy with the way this turned out. Still have a little bit of touch up to do. But we'll do that just before we do our final fiberglassing. So I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding on the center part. Uh, in the on the underside and then I'm going to start on the sheeting of the engine area. All right guys so I just finished sheeting the front area front part of the fuselage. Uh, this I found was a lot easier doing it in two pieces so a small piece there and then another piece there just because there's such a sharp angle on that corner. Um, but that worked out quite well. And then of course you can see the rest of it. So we still have to sand all this down. One of the big steps left to do as well is all of this work or all of the protrusions past the firewall need to be sanded flush with the firewall. So all of these guys, the side of the fuselage. So basically that firewall just because of the cowl design needs to be completely flat. So that's gonna be a fairly big job, but uh, we'll be doing that at some point as well. So fuselage is looking magnificent. All right, so tip time, guys. Oh, you may have noticed I got a, well, not a new TV, but a, a newer old TV. We took one from inside the house and I got to upgrade my TV in the garage. It's huge. So big, big TV in the garage. Anyways, tip time, guys. Um, this tip comes from uh, a lot of different industries, but I'm experienced with it in the construction industry and um, we use it quite often and it's one of those things that we deal with quite often. So critical lighting, I'll show you guys how it affects um, how you can check the finish product on the airframe. So if you just look at the front cowl section here or front end of the fuselage, I've already sanded some of this and we're pretty stinking close. This front section still needs to be sanded, but when you look under normal lighting, it looks fine, right? Everything looks good, nice and smooth. <clears throat> and then as soon as you add, this may not show up on camera, but then as soon as you add critical light, which is light coming across the surface, you can see things like the scratches right there. And I've done pretty good sanding everything else out. 
Uh, we're a little bit of a high spot right here, so maybe the camera will pick that up. So that's the stuff that when you're doing your final sand on the airframe, you want to be looking for. There's a couple indents right there, which you can probably sort of see off camera. But as soon as you add the critical light coming across the surface, you can see it. So good thing to do as you go over the fuselage. Um, you know, here's an example right here. It looks fine. And then you add that in, you can see there's a kind of a deep gouge. And on the edge right there, we're not level, right? So those are all things that you want to use critical lighting to your advantage to figure that stuff out. Now, LED lights, we don't generally use them in the, in the interior construction industry because they are too harsh. They're very, they're very, very focused. And that's actually a problem um, using incandescent incandescent lights like an old-fashioned we call it old-fashioned but old-fashioned light bulb uh, with a softer light source is a better way or the more common way accepted way to do it but we want to be as harsh as possible on this fuselage so we're using the worst harshest light possible so that's why we're using the LED lights so that's tip time for you in this episode all right, so a couple big steps are uh, happening next. I mean, this isn't really a big step, but uh, so we traced the um, fin pieces, I think maybe is what you want to call them. Uh, the uh, horizontal stab fin pieces, traced them out on the G10 material, the 1 16th G10 material, cut these out with my scroll saw and they do a pretty good job. And next to my bent screwdriver, my belt and disc sander are definitely one of the highly recommended tools. If you build airplanes or do anything in the shop, this is a great tool to have. Anyway, so I just uh, touch the, the edges of, of the, uh, the fin pieces out on the disc and then just give them a final quick sanding on the belt. Works great. And next thing guys, big, big step. We are ready to glue the vertical stab on. <clears throat> so I'd like to get this done tonight before I go to bed. So by tomorrow, this is all dry. So we're pretty straightforward here as far as how this fits on. It only fits on one way. I did take my file and just cleaned up a little bit of this high saw here because it was bumped up on these ribs so it wasn't sitting perfectly flat but otherwise these little tabs interlock with the underside of the rudder or vertical stab so essentially it goes on one way clicks in you can feel a very definite kind of stop and then what we're going to do is we are going to take my digital protractor. So we're just checking angles basically. Now if we stick this against the vertical stab, we should get exactly the same angle on both sides when we want it to be. I was doing this earlier, I was kind of measuring it like this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but getting the equal number on both sides. There we go, 88.1 and 88.1. So anyways, should be fairly simple to put this in place uh, because it's got some definite stops and we just measure the angle on both sides and we will be basically vertical straight up and down. So what I'm gonna do guys is I'm going to get this glued and we are going to use high saw and we are going to use high saw 9462 to glue this on. Uh, this is empty, so I need to pick up some more of this, but um, that's what we're going to use to glue the vertical stab on. Big step. All right, guys, so just taking a look at this here, we've basically got a couple contact areas. So we've got number one, the top of the ribs. Number two, we've got these interlocking tabs. And then number three, there's also two pieces that come down from the rudder that interlock with 
this system. So <clears throat> basically you want to get high saw when you're gluing something like this. You want to get high saw on all the contact surfaces and you want it to be a decent amount of material. Of course, so. And then we do have a bit of an interlock here on the side where it touches the balsa. So we'll just put a little bit on there as well. All right, so that's the fuselage side. Now we just wanna make sure we take care of the contact surfaces on the actual vertical stab. So basically it's both sides or the inside pieces of the, these tabs. And then we'll also put some inside the little, uh, little grooves there. All right, so now let's get this thing installed. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go in and get these corners, which I have access to still. Okay, so now we're in place. Now we're going to take the protractor and we'll go on the same spot. Perfect. So my angle basically is exactly the same on both sides. So we've got 89.5 on both sides. So naturally right now, this is sitting in the right spot. So that is awesome. Very happy with that. Now, one thing I can do is I can put some thin CA on the sides here uh, once I'm happy and confident everything is where it needs to be, put some thin CA on the sides, spray it with some kicker, and that's going to hold this thing in place perfectly still all night while it cures, and I don't have to worry about it getting bumped or moved or anything like that. Not like it would. It's stuck. Um, it doesn't have anywhere to go, but we'll just double check that. We're going to touch it up with some CA, and then we will let it cure overnight. All right, it is the next day, guys. The high saw has all cured and this is incredibly strong. That is such a great connection to the airframe. Uh, really, really happy with this whole back end and how everything worked back there. Uh, I think it was absolutely awesome that uh, that all turned out good with the removable stab and the fantastic connection with the rudder vertical stab and the fuselage so you can see the um at the end of when i attach this i put the the extra high saw just in these corners here there's a bit of a, a gap there that it could fill that in and uh worked out good so very very happy with that uh next things we have to move on to is cutting our little squares in these pieces so we can get the blind nuts that we're going to use to fasten these inside the horizontal stab and then we can sheet the horizontal stab and get that finished. And then additionally we can now sand all of the firewall plywood that sticks out so we'll get that done as well. All right, guys, the piece has worked out just perfect. The little uh, half moon shape or half circle shape, we still need to do some sanding there, but it fits on just beautifully. So the goal here, what we're going to do is we're going to put a blind nut kind of close to the front edge uh, and bolt, and then we're going to put another one right in this area. Obviously, we don't can't go back here because it'll interfere with the actual elevator. 
So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some uh, spare pieces of ply that we have from the kit. And we're just gonna add those as backer in there. So one here and one there, and that will give us some surface to put our blind nut in. All right guys, so next thing we're gonna focus on is getting all of this sanded down to be flush with the firewall. That's the best way, right way to get this all mounted because our cowl, uh, the scale cowl, butts right into the, the firewall on this plane. So quite a bit of sanding to do here. I've got my Dremel that I use with my carbide bit. And these are phenomenal for metal, wood, all that type of stuff. So this is a really, really common tool that I use. And then I've got my Milwaukee sander. Um, this works great for everything and there's lots of different attachments for it. So this is what I'm gonna use for the balsa mostly. And this is what I'm gonna use for the wood. All right guys, this is my other phenomenal little tool. Uh, this is my sander, but you can attach this uh, different attachments on there and it works great as a little saw. So it gets into these areas and you can chop these uh, extensions off really, really easily. So we've got everything nice and flattened. We do have a little bit of touch-ups here to do that I'll show you. So we're gonna put a little bit of filler in this area uh, just because we still have some holes there and, and whatnot. We do also, when I put this cowl on, so <clears throat> let me take a step back for a second. So at this point you can put the cowl on, butt it up to the fuselage. It's going to be a little bit tricky with out all my hands. So basically something kind of like that. So we've got a nice profile all the way around the fuselage. We do have a little bit of sanding to do on these bottom corners on both sides. So the other side I can't show you because I can't get over there. But uh, we've got a little bit of sanding to do on those edges. <clears throat> which is good. So it's basically the same kind of profile on this side. So we've got a bit of sanding to do there, a little bit of sanding to do there, a little bit of fill work to do here. And the other thing we need to do is, so just because of the, the way the firewall was set here, so we've got to fill in this little strip of wood and we want to use ply for that, or we could also use high saw, but we basically need this edge to continue all the way down nicely. So we've got a nice fit where the cowl butts into that. So that's kind of what um, the, the whole goal here is, is just basically getting the surface nice and flat and ready to receive the cowl. Now I've got a couple ideas here. I know we were talking about sheeting everything, but we're kind of flipping all over the place. So this is the former or the firewall that comes in the kit if you are putting a regular engine on this plane. So it's nice that we have this because we've got some options here for using this to either mount the cowl or some other options. So here's some of the things I'm thinking about at this point. So number one, we cut this off right here, which would bring it right there. And that allows us to either glue the top portion of this piece to match the existing firewall. Okay, and then we can put some thinner balsa on top of that to make a nice surface to receive the cowl. So that's the first thing that I'm kind of thinking about here. The second thing is using this piece mounted to the cowl. So glue, so glue this top edge here to the cowl and what that allows us to do is use that for the mounting of this top portion of the cowl 
to the firewall. So if we want to undo the top part, of course, we're gonna have some um, fasteners along the side, along the joint line of the cowl, but I wanna try and minimize any that we have to add on the top portion. So it'd be nice if we were to glue that original firewall piece on the cowl, open the door, and then have a bolt right here, which sucks the top portion on. So just kind of giving you a, a, an idea of what we've decided here with the owner. So we're gonna skip the door on this side and we're gonna keep the door on this side. We'd like the door as big as possible, but the cowl split line is about here. So what I'm thinking about doing is splitting this cowl, having it come down and then up. So this top piece would be removable and I'm not sure if a bolt back here will be required, but just again, <clears throat> kind of thinking out loud and sharing my thought process with you guys and uh, so that's kind of what I'm doing at this point so now that I've got the firewall all sanded and ready to receive the cowl uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch up the areas that need to be touched up and once that's done we can wait for the high salt to cure and then we're going to move on to the other items so sheeting the elevator and things like that so that's uh, where I'm at right now and Continuing on. So when you're doing stuff like this, guys, you can, I mean, you could put one up here, drill it, put the other one up, drill it, but take a little bit extra time. You know, we've got two pieces here. We've got them matched up. We're gonna drill this out. So we've got matching holes on both sides. They will be marked right and left, but now we'll have one that's marked like this that will fit on the right side. And the other one has matching holes that will fit on the left hand side. So take that little bit extra time and it will work out good. Now, when we put our surfaces on here, our right side is nice and spaced out. So we've got a good amount of space, but the left hand side, we're quite tight right here and it's gonna be hitting the fairing piece. So. If you look closely here, you can see, and it doesn't take much for this kind of thing to happen, but if you look closely here, our hole is a little bit off center, enough that it still works, but enough that it affects the gap right there, right? So compare this one <clears throat> to the right-hand side where we're perfectly in the middle. So enough to definitely affect how things are gonna turn out and the reason why our spacing's off. So all we have to do in this case is just move our holes over a little bit and we do have lots of room in the actual rib here because there's little uh, ply thin plates on both sides. So we've got lots of room in the actual hinge. We just need that hole to be moved over a little bit. So when we go to glue these things on, we'll just elongate that hole slightly this direction and that will give us enough spacing on the edge. All right guys, so we've got the fairing or fin piece mounted. We use some countersunk screws, uh, which are metric and some metric blind nuts on the inside there. And it gives a beautiful look that uh, finishes that off nicely. So this side's done. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. All right, so elevator is, or sorry, horizontal stab is all essentially done, except obviously the leading edge. I just glued the leading edge on and everything else is finished. So if you remember, we had to do that little patch here in the, uh, the trailing edge area, that's done. We've got the top section all done and uh, we've got the fitment of the fairing or edge pieces all done as well too. So everything is wrapped up. The only thing left to do is once this is cured, we will shape the leading edge. Now with this horizontal stab all sheeted, it is extremely stiff. It was quite flexible before when we had it uh, um, on the airplane and we were you know, using it as, as mock-ups and stuff like that, but now it's uh, extremely stiff. So that worked out good, fairly straightforward. Uh, I'm gonna uh, work on shaping the leading edge next. All right, guys, that is gonna conclude this episode of the Platus PC6 Turbo Porter from MR Aero Design. 
Uh, very, very cool plane. We accomplished a lot in this episode. I feel like we did. When I look back on my list, there's tons of things that we actually got completed, which is awesome. So we did the fuse underside sheeting, the edges were completed, shaped around the float mounts. We did the firewall of uh, protrusions were sanded flat. Um, we did the critical lighting thing to show you guys uh, how to find all the imperfections. Uh, the engine bay is sheeted on the top side. Um, the horizontal stab, the little G10 fins are done. Uh, cowl was kind of test fit initially and the horizontal stab is sheeted. So we made some wicked progress in this episode. If you can kind of sneak, sneak a peek right over. I won't show, I won't show too much, but on the other side of the, uh, the fuselage here is the next video's primary initial focus. So in the next video, we are gonna do wing wiring, wing sheeting. I know I said we we're gonna get all the sheeting done in this episode, but things don't work out that way. We've got a lot accomplished. So, uh, but for sure, we're gonna get, gonna get the wiring done on the main wings. We're gonna get the sheeting done on the main wings. We're gonna do a bunch of little details. And then I have a feeling we're gonna start possibly on the cowl in the next episode. So thanks for tuning in guys. If you have any questions, list them down below. Feel free to reach out to me via email as well. And the other thing, guys, is I when this video comes out, is probably won't be live yet, but if you watch this a few days after the video comes out, make sure you check out my website, the store section. Um, if it still says coming soon, that means we're still in progress. But we have some very, very cool things coming to the lighter side of RC. Very excited for it. And... Uh, so don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, guys. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. And we will see you in the next episode.